in spite of industrial disputes, which have led to price increases in a number of cases, British manufacturers have introduced some exciting new models for the 1970 motor show. Ever-increasing costs, both in Britain and on the continent, are tending to discourage new ideas in engineering unless they provide greater efficiency or a financial saving. Trends this year include sweeping improvements in suspension, interior ventilation, and safety factors. Britain certainly come up with some polished products. Vauxhall's new Viva is a good example of refinements that have been made. Two completely new bodies, saloon and estate, give notably more passenger space than their predecessors, and they're more powerful, too. Each of the seven new Vivas incorporate a special safety hydraulic braking system and numerous other features to protect passengers in the event of accident. The coil spring suspension gives a smoother ride over rough ground. The makers say many of the refinements are directly due to special testing of the vehicles on their new 700-acre proving ground. The new Viva range certainly made a splash at the show, and so did the young women. But some firms decided to concentrate more on the vital statistics of their products. As usual, the show attracted thousands of visitors from all over the world. This year's attendance may well beat the record. Now, another look at the Vauxhall range. Triumph have replaced their 1300 model in the light car market with the rear drive front engine Toledo, a compact, well-balanced family saloon at a realistic price. And contending with the Viva for the title of the most improved car of the year, the latest Austin Maxi. It's got new interior and exterior trim and a new rod-operated gear change. Another from Triumph, the Stag. This high-quality Tourer, announced earlier this year, is powered by a new 3-litre V8 engine. There's a long waiting list for this one. Plenty of demand, too, for the beautifully styled Triumph GT6 Sports. Ford's big news, of course, is the Cortina, now available in 35 different versions. The weight of the new body is offset by more powerful engines, and there's much more room inside. Perhaps the most interesting new British product is the versatile Range Rover. The cross-country abilities of this remarkable vehicle have to be experienced to be believed. On ordinary roads, it has all the comfort and performance of the high-quality Rover Saloon. The Bond Bug, presenting a double image, beats the ban on three-wheelers. The makers also decided to incorporate a few Bug Bunnies just for the show. For sheer luxury, the Rolls-Royce Silver Club. Bobby Moore, who opened this 55th International Motor Show, reckons this car's really on the ball. Jack Brabham was fascinated by Vauxhall's exciting-looking SRV Ideas car. It's a far-sighted look by the company's styling department into the design and layout of cars of the future, but it's not in production and can only be seen at Earl's Court. Today, all British manufacturers must look to the future. Foreign car makers are pretty busy blowing their own trumpets. They've been selling more and more cars in Britain and last summer, one in every seven cars sold here had been made abroad. But British cars are still in demand in world markets. Export orders worth 136 million pounds were announced when the show opened. That's pretty impressive. But if our manufacturers are to face their growing foreign competition in Britain, they'll need to expand in the home market. Many of the new models at Earl's Court should help them to do just that.